Hello there. This is me working live on creating a Photoshop banner. Sorry, fan art banner. So here's my original image. You see the pixel size. I'm going to make it big. I've got resampled ticked. I want it 1600 by 900. The resolution's only three. I don't like that. So I'm going to change that to 150. Don't click OK there though because you'll see that the pixels need to be rechanged back to the 1600 by 900 which brings your file back to a much more manageable size and won't be so artifacty. Um, you can see there's jagged edges and things here, but we'll get rid of those as we progress. Now I'm just converting to a smart object so that I can go back later to the filters that I apply to this image and change them. And I'm applying the Camera Raw filter, which it's a filter in Photoshop CC. Um, it's also available Camera Raw in Lightroom. It's the develop module in Lightroom. The first thing I'm doing here is altering the clarity and then I up the vibrance a little, pull back the saturation. Now I'm playing with the dehaze, which I love the dehaze. It's great for making, um, well, for taking away mist and stuff. I've actually added a little bit to this one. In retrospect, I wish I hadn't, but anyway, I did. <laughs> So first I'll go and change the auto balance, white balance, and then I'll change auto for all of the sliders there, exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, and blacks, and then tinker. Auto is actually often gives you a pretty good um, go in Photoshop. It, they're a lot better now that the values that Photoshop thinks that your image needs. So I always give auto a go first, and it, it's a great starting point. Um, and I'll just tinker with the other ones now that I've actually got rid of a lot of the dark shadows and that that were in this image and change the color around. Now I'm going in to smooth out some of that extra noise that I have introduced from one blowing up the image, two removing the, the shadows, three because it was such a shadow dark image. There'd be a lot of, and it was a low quality image as well. I love the luminance slider and what I'm going here for is not photorealistic so much as, as a kind of painted look. Now I, I do the smoothing out first and then I go up to the sharpen and sharpen so put back. Um, I don't know I've tried both ways this is just the way that I do it you can do the sharpen first and then and then um, but sometimes it's too noisy to sharpen first you need to get rid of some pixels. If you hold down the alt key while you're moving these sliders you'll get this lovely um, um, negative style thing and you can see the noise there that I'm removing um, if you hold the alt key again on this one you can see the outline because these sharpening is sharpening the edges of your image um, so wherever it thinks there's an image uh, an edge it's going to to add a little bit more oomph to it so you can see that I've brought back quite a bit of the detail um, that I smoothed away um, I guess I probably would have liked to not do his eyes and I could have done that by, um, you know, I can remove that by uh, masking it, but I didn't in this instance when we go back. This is just a before and after. You can see how dark the image was before and now it's, it's an entirely different image. It's so much more light. Um, and um, the background is, is still nicely blurred. It's a nice screen cap because because he is the, the center, but bringing it out light, he's, he's really starting to stand out in the image, which is, he's the subject I want him to stand out. So as I said, I, I, I would have probably used the smart, the mask on the smart filter, uh, but I didn't. So applying a black and white, because I like spike to be a little pale and I'm applying apply image using apply image I generally always use apply image to make a mask on my black and white layers when I'm doing this and you can see now uh, flicking on and off that it has substantially lightened spark uh, taking a lot of the pink out of him there's lots of other ways to take the pink out but that's a really quick and easy one um, and it works so love it the thing about Photoshop is that um, there are a million ways to do something. So I've created a new layer, it's set to sample all layers, and I'm going to use my smudge tool. I've bumped it up to 200% so I can get a proper look. I'm just running it along the edges. The thing with the smudge tool, it will do the color um, from where, where you start from into where you go. So if you want to go light, a light color and spread it out, start in the light colors. If you want to 
spread the dark color a little bit more, uh, alter it a bit, then start in the dark colors. Uh, it's a really great tool. You can see we've just got rid of that little tag uh, on his um, skin there. And we're just so softening the edges, that, that pixelated look that we've got from you know, considerably, a, well, I don't know how many times we've enlarged it, but it's more than twice. Um, and that's why they say don't enlarge images because you get all this extra pixelation and artifacts put into your image. Um, often, particularly if it's a, a lower quality image, the colours aren't going to be so crash hot when you enlarge them either because there's not a lot of pixels there for Photoshop to play with um, when you ask it, you know, and that's what you're asking it to do, play with the colours, play with the pixels. You know, you're saying, give me more pixels, and it's saying, oh, but there are so few to play with. So just going around there, um, I don't know why I should get rid of that white there, but I think I forgot to. I'm actually recording the voice after the fact and uh, the video is now rendered. Um, so I'm, I can point out to you what, <laughs> what I wished I had done when I was doing this, this uh, project. It's really just a matter of um, trial and error when I make these things. I've, I've got a pretty good idea of what I'm going to do now because I've been making them for a, a couple of years now. So um, the smudging, that's pretty pretty standard. Um, you can smudge an entire image and make a painting if you want to. I'm, in this case, uh, making a bit of a mess there and I don't know why I didn't go back and fix that either. But <laughs> hindsight's a beautiful thing. I'm really using the smudge tool here to just smooth out the, the artifacts that um, have come up in the image because I uh, significantly increased its size. Um, I have used it to actually make a paint. You can use different brushes and you get that brush strokes going uh, so that it actually looks like that you have painted um, with a really, uh, you know, a heavily loaded brush. Um, but you see here I'm on the nose there, I want to get rid of some dark colour, so I'm pulling into light. I'm just working on uh, the normal mode with this brush now, but there are other modes to work with the, the, um, the smudge tool. And I'm just basically following the different uh, tones in my image, just smoothing out the tones, maybe doing a little bit of blending, maybe pulling a little bit of the dark into the light or vice versa and as I said if you want to pull the dark into the light start in the dark if you want to pull the light into the dark start in the light and you're just following following your photo oh good I did go back and fix that <laughs> so here I'm just uh, on his ear I just pulled the, the light down into the dark there a little bit just along the edge of his ear now I'm just trying to smooth the edge. You don't want too smooth because it's skin, it's not a straight line. When you're doing the lips, um, try not to get rid of all the striations in the lips uh, because it, you know it's a more natural thing to have different colours. So so never like you know make your brush huge and just go wham and over over a large area. That's you need to increase and decrease the size of the brush depending on what you're working on. Uh, here the image actually just disappeared because of the um, the lighting really. It, the, the, those pixels were there. He does really have a neck that joins onto his face but um, because of the enlargement and the lighting um, changes that I made in camera raw uh, the, the, that part of his jaw, the shadow there has faded into the background. So what I'm doing, I'll just lighten now because I want to get rid of this dark um, beard-like place. Oh. Mostly I use the bracket keys to make my brush smaller and lower. Um, but sometimes Photoshop's, I don't know, it's behind, behind me. I don't have an overly powerful machine running it. Um, and sometimes it, it just stops working. So I just right-click and pull up the brush panel and manually increase the size of the brush and then you'll find that the brackets start working again and Bob's your uncle. So I'm just trying to use um, lighten mode now with my uh, 
my smudge brush because I actually want to lighten these darker shadows because I don't like them and, and uh, Spike doesn't have a beard, he's a vampire um, they don't grow beards as I said try and follow the shape the shading of your image and where there is light and there is also dark and I just want to darken that a little bit just to pull his jaw out of the background use normal mode with this brush it kind of lets photoshop work out while she's working in the dark i'll just you know keep that normal mode and might soften it a little bit to mingle it into the light so take your time with the smudge brush you're not in a hurry you're doing this for fun T-shirt look going on. And because I've gone, you know, I want this to have a painted look about it, so I don't have to be precise because theoretically I've done this with a paintbrush, so paintbrushes um, are not necessarily precise with edges and such like. Just reduce the shadows under his neck there just a jaw rather just a little bit it's like the lovely jaw look at that squareness mm. and the beauty of the smudge brush if you if you've actually done something wrong just go back and do it again sometimes when I'm working on a, a, a project that that I know is going to be a, a lot of work um, I will make separate layers for separate uh, parts of the of the uh, the head or the body, whatever I'm working on, um, so that I can, um, you know, if I make a really boo boo, I can I can just delete that layer and start again. The other thing that you can do is get you uh, if you if you've smudged something and you don't like it and you've gone on and on and you can't go back in history because you've got too many too many brush strokes after the one that you really don't like. Um, just use your erase tool in your layer in the smudge layer and erase the little bit that you don't like um, do it again and if you if you it still needs smudging just do it again so um, that's one of the few times I use the erase tool when I'm actually uh, I actually want to get rid of some uh, some smudging or some paint or some sharpening I will use the erase tool in the in the particular layer in the sharpening in this case a smudge layer so now I'm just putting a hue sat in there. I'm just changing it to get a little bit of blue. I actually, I actually want some more colour into his coat, um, and just a little blue into his skin. He's a vampire, so I just want to pull out, pull out the pink a little bit more. Um, I'll put it back later because that's what you do. <laughs> but um, so I'm just changing it. You'll see that I've slipped the side into blue up the saturation for that color a bit and made it a little bit darker as well and now i'm going to paint in uh, his eyes because you'll notice that i've lost the blueness in his eyes it, it uh, was sort of a bluey green there from the original image and i've uh, lost the blueness you can all you know i could also have probably um mask that out uh, quite a bit more in my black and white layer uh, to get that the color the original color back but um, probably didn't think of it at the time <laughs> so and I was going to do this anyway so um, and that looks pretty gross yes it does and here comes layer mode to just save the day so I've changed it to color and immediately that's um, reduced the, the thickness of it the depth of the color but I've also uh, reduce the opacity because I don't want it looking like fake blue eyes I just want it to be lovely blue eyes 
and um, there is opacity in your in the iris of your eye so you don't want a solid block of color you want it you want it to retain that op opaque type look that depth and I love the sharpen tool a lot of people won't use the sharpen tool but I love the sharpen tool you've got to be careful um, but what the sharpen tool does is as you can see it's immediately taken that color layer below that I've put into his eye and brought that blue up beautifully and it's brought it up and brought up the highlights that were in the iris as well as as in his actual um, well you know the bit in the middle <laughs> so uh, don't be afraid of the, the sharpen tool but do do keep an eye that you don't introduce too much artifacts and too many you can over pixelate an image with the sharpen tool that's probably why people don't like it uh, and now I want some lips. I don't like pink lips because I want lips to, to match his skin tone. So I'm looking for a, a pinky, orangey sort of colour. Um, so add the about there. And the same deal, I'm just going to slather it on. And make it look like it's going to be really awful and cover the highlights and yucky and you think oh that's 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 dreadful change the so, layer blend mode to hue and voila it's given us some more color to his lips and once again i'm going to use the sharpen tool if i can find it over there i, I only use the sharpen tool generally when it's at 100 percent because you can over sharpen if you're at 200 percent. i like to pull them up to 200 percent to do the smudging because you get a better view of what you're doing and to do uh, you know to paint in that so you can see the outline of where you're going better but put it back to 100 percent for sharpening um, that way you're gonna it'll help you avoid uh, pixelation so now he's got nice pinker lips pinker brown lips he's still got the uh, highlight shading on him highlight is so important the highlight uh, highlights and shadows are what give you the contours of the face so you, you want to keep that um, I'm just moving a little bit of the sharpen there because I didn't like you might have noticed there's a brown and black dot there too many pixels so I'm using my erase tool and just removing it I also like I do like to sharpen the frenulum I think that's that's such an important part of that the whole um, structure of the lips it's nice to have a nice deep blue just a little bit on his eyelashes um, and sharpening will bring up the color that so you see that's that's kind of almost putting eyeliner on him that's why I love the sharpen tool used judiciously use like a paintbrush resize it to what you're doing now I'm going to use some color layers. I love color layers. Loads of different styles and just keep trying them until you get an effect that you like. That's what I do. So um, that's a three strip look which I really like. If you just back you see he's got a little bit more pink back into it. A bit more human looking into his skin. Um, and um, while leaving his hair white and still giving him that pale long suntan so vampire and don't worry about the extra ultra blue at the moment in the t-shirt what I've done now is I've combined all of my images into a smart object and that, all that means is that um, I used to go control shift alt to make a, 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 another copy but putting them into a smart object means I can actually double click that smart object and go and change it and now I'm using smart sharpen 
and she comes up with this huge um, uh, number of sliders for you. And you've got a preview there in the corner, but it also changes the big image as well so that you can get a really good idea of what you're uh, what you're going to make it look like. And basically just fiddle, you know. As I said, I, I wanted to go for a little bit of a, a painted look in this, so I wanted a bit more edge about him because I mean that's what you get when it's painted. You'll see now that 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 smart sharpen has become a filter attached to my layer, and I could go back and change all of the settings on that. And the other thing I can do is go into the the mask there and just paint out where I don't want it to appear. The effect of that. Um, Just looking at history now, I've gone back to history to see whether I like what I've done. And I decide I do. You can also on the on those filters I didn't do it there, but you can actually um, you can actually um, I'm just applying a black and white gradient now. Uh, and you set it to uh, a blend mode usually soft light is my go-to blend mode for most gradients that I set but you can see black and white it just really sharpened that image amazingly and what it did it's not sharpening anything actually what it did, it's bringing up the contrast in the image uh, and that's you know why it had such a, 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 an astounding change in the whole look of the thing so I'm just applying a curves layer and it was lightened and I set it to normal, left it at normal. Now I've just filled the mask in with black and I'm going to use a white brush with flow set to 17% just to play in the highlights. And I just want to lighten his iris color a little bit and I definitely want to pick out the highlights in his eyeball. And on the lip there. So this is um, a version of dodging that's non-destructive. If you use the dodge tool, which which um, that's a tool that Photoshop provides for you to actually do this to, to bring up the highlights in your image and considerably lighten your image the more you apply it. You've got to apply that direct to the image, whereas doing it this way, it's a layer above the image. And if I don't like it later on, I can change it. I can reduce the opacity, I can change the blend mode, um, I can delete it. So it, it means that I can do my dodging without uh, and, and give myself an out if I don't like it later on. And sometimes you do that. You get down in a project and you think, oh gosh, why did I do that? And take it away. You can see the difference it's making. It's really, really picking up the, the, the lighter parts. Um, depending on what the lighting is, you know, I might uh, go over back over and forth several times, um, or I might um, just put a light brush across. Try not to do the white, get your whites too white. I used to do the whites of my eyes too white because your whites generally aren't brilliant white. There's generally little veins and lines and things in them. So if you've got those in your image, you know, that's fine. And if you haven't put some in, <laughs> I probably could have put some in that, um, that right eye. You can see the difference when I click that on and off. So that's it's a curved line. I just pulled the uh, middle of the line up into the highlight section to where I thought it should be ah oh, right I'm going to smudge the neck I just realized that I forgot to play with the neck before 
Um, one thing with the smudge tool, with all your adjustment layers, if you've done a few adjustment layers um, on an image, a lot of the like the smudge tool, you need to be above the adjustment layers or turn them all off. And if you even sometimes you turn them off if you want to do the, the smudge layer closer to the actual image, um, but it, the lighting won't turn out. You'll actually end up with um, shadows and ghosting and that that you don't want so whilst uh, it's nice to be tidy and keep all of the layers that do a particular thing together sometimes it's not possible and you need to do adjustment layers later in the project um, and for instance I deliberately do some adjustment layers later in the project for instance sharpening I didn't sharpen the eyes until after I had painted them because I wanted to sharpen in that colour the same with his lips I wanted to sharpen in that color um, and that's why I did it at the, the step that I did it the sharpening Oh, and that's the other thing that uh, fellow um, fan art people um, suggested to me that I didn't used to do, and that's to name all your layers so that you know what you uh, what they're for. So this is uh, from a texture I'm overlaying from Adobe Paper Texture Pro, which comes with um, if you've got a Creative Cloud subscription, you can install it for free. And it has a selection of very nice textures uh, from flypaper textures. Um, and you get them for free and you can use them how you like. Uh, so I just picked a bit of a painterly one. You can see in the background that, that it's applied sort of like brush strokes. I don't want it on his face though, so I'm just masking that out by using a, a brush filled with black paint in the mask of that layer. So you can see the effect it's had on the background. It's, it's changed the uh, tone of the background. It's also helping the spikes pop out again. If you press, um, if you, uh, sorry, pick on the, um, press Alt and click on the mask, you'll actually get the mask if you want. It helps you then paint directly into the mask. Uh, so you can see that you've filled it properly. So that's Adobe Paper Texture Pro. Um, you can get textures from anywhere. The textures are just images, but um, some of them, are, you know, they've been made specifically to, to be used to add particular effects, such as this one, uh, a painterly effect. Another curves layer, and this one, I have set it to the preset lighten and then changed the mode to lighter colour. And I... Um, just want it for his face I don't want it on the back so I've inverted the layer mask and now I'm using a brush with white to remove it from Spike's face um, sorry to put it back on Spike's face I just want it to lighten his face not the back Love exposure. See, I've just just barely touched the offset, uh, just to pop the um, the darker colours in the image. Um, and you'll see that the suit, the, his coat, and that are starting to look a lot darker, uh, which helps the shine of that too. Particularly uh, after I've dodged it before, and you're getting that nice wet leather look. shiny leather look even though you know his duster was disgusting um, I'm just making a vignette now so and this is a quick trip make a new layer um, then use your mask oh, sorry uh, set to 150 pixel feather and then add a mask and it fills it then you uh, invert the mask 
so that it protects everything that's in the middle. Um, <laughs> please make sure you go into the layer. I forget that all the time. Often I just fill it, uh, fill this layer with um, the bucket tool with a colour, but I'm just using a uh, a gradient at the moment, and I'm using a circular gradient. Just gives a you know because I want to get rid of the background basically. Uh, it, this is all about him. So um, the background is is um, whited out basically because of uh, I've used a black to white gradient uh, circular. I used it short, so I've just put a little bit of dark up on his head. Um, now I'm just trying various blend modes, but I'm going to go back to the one originally because that's the one I should use. But that's the thing about you just experiment to get the, sight, the the look that you want. So I started with hard light because I thought that would be the way to go. Then I thought try soft light and that, that just negated it. Try vivid light and come back to hard light. And that's what that's what making art's all about. Experimentation. Finally another colour look layer. see all the changes that you've got here and again with these I just experiment um, you pick one you think might work and then change the uh, change the blend mode and turn it on and off see what you think that's really what takes the time it is it's just looking around now I kind of like that because it's um, you can see it's just just highlighted him and just behind him a bit. I'm just going to drop it back a bit. It's, it's picked up the coat collar and it, it kind of draws your eye and you go up because what I want you to get from this picture is that soulful look. You know, that Spike's got that beautiful face, that, that soulful look. And now I'm going to be really naughty and just use the sharpen tool overall. Just gently, you see it set at 50% strength, um, which is about as much as it goes. I have gone high when I'm doing something in particular. Um, there are lots of ways to over, over, you know, do an overall sharpen, but um, I'm not scared of the sharpen tool, I'll use it. Just another layer just to uh, to do his coat. As I said, I, I like to use different layers for different parts because that lets you lets you go back and change it if you think you've not done it the way you'd like it. I subscribe to Creative Cloud and uh, it lets you keep some of your assets up there or well, lots of them. I don't keep many of them up there but one of the things I do keep up there are my signatures because I can just um, just go get it and put it on the image without having to find it. I've got to have a, an internet connection obviously but um, I do find it useful. I've got a few, few bits and pieces up there that I can just pull down whenever I want and use on, on other computers if I'm there. I do have um, an iPad that I theoretically do stuff on. I always tag my fan art. I think that uh, I've spent the time doing it. Um, and also I want people to know that it, it probably is a manipulation or it, you know, it's not real. Now I had stopped at that, um, that was the movie, and then I thought, nah, I can do better. So I've opened it up again in Photoshop, I've added uh, a levels layer, and I added a curves layer, and I didn't want that on his face, I just put it on the back ground, and then I've added a colour lookup, drop blues, set to normal, and 40%. And you can see the, the changes. Now this one, I love this one. It's crisp, warm look again. And just to bring back some pink into his face and to his lips. And a curves layer, which uh, is set to light 
lighten and lighter colour again and I put that on his face, mask it just to his face. Another colour look up which is a Kodak uh, Fuji film one just pops the image a little bit. And then I pop them all into a group which then I can apply a mask to and mask, mask it out if I want, uh, which I have uh, because I really wanted it on him and I think he now is he's really popping out of that background. Thanks for watching.